Good evening. Merry Christmas on this Christmas Eve of 2020. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ and we take a few moments to reflect on what we learn from the birth of Christ. On behalf of the First Baptist Church of Gas City, I welcome you. I'm Pastor Steve, and let us begin. The scripture reading is from Luke chapter 1, actually chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus, issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Now, basically just looking at this portion of scripture, there's nothing really exciting, really transforming we may think. But perhaps we can learn a lesson from this portion of Christ's birth. I believe we can learn from Mary and Joseph the lesson of resilience. That concept of no matter what's going on, we hang in there, we, we persevere, we overcome regardless of the struggles that we experience. Because Mary exhibited those, that characteristic. She also demonstrated resourcefulness. Now, basically two things I want you to come away from resilience and resourcefulness as we go through tough times that we experience in today's world we see that Mary being a late-term pregnancy she made the trek 70 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem that is quite a journey for a teenager who is almost full term. To think that she was so loyal to Joseph that she hung tight with him, that she overcame those obstacles that she was experiencing along with him. She made the journey. And she even gave birth in a cave underneath a house. You see, we learn that not only is Mary resourceful, but she's humble. She has humility in the midst of all of this. 
Nothing is too below her that she can't accept the kindnesses that are available to her to bring this child into the world. You see, first she accepts a place with the animals, the livestock. She knows that she needs shelter and she accepts it regardless of what it is. She uses bands of cloth. Now in my imagination, basically scraps of cloth, clothing. Whatever was available, that's what she used to wrap this baby up. It wasn't like a receiving blanket that we are familiar with, but just scraps of cloth just laying around. Could have been shop rags if it were in today's situation. But she wrapped her child up in what was available. And she laid him in a feed trough. A place where animals put their snouts and their noses and eating the hay and that's where they placed Jesus. She made do with what she had. She didn't complain. She didn't make excuses. She didn't say this isn't the way it's supposed to be. She just did what needed to be done at that moment, regardless of what other people thought. Now, what can we take away from this little moment of Mary and Joseph and Jesus' experience together? We can take away the concept that anything that is worthwhile is not always going to be enjoyable. The things that need to happen, that we want to happen, that we believe is awesome, that is important, takes great effort. And it's not always going to be enjoyable. We can take away the idea that God promised to be with us along our journey. He didn't promise to make it easy. He didn't promise that we weren't going to have to make hard choices. He sent his son Jesus to Christ not to make our lives easier, but to make them fuller, more full, more satisfying in the long run. We are in need of a, a word of good news. And the good news might not sound like good news. The good news is we can tough it up. We can overcome these circumstances we find ourselves in that we can be like Mary and Joseph and, and even Jesus. For Jesus' life was no easier that we can overcome, we will overcome if we work together in these tough times, if we understand that our preferences can be put aside for the greater good. Yes, these are tough. But like Mary, she put aside what her hopes and dreams were to allow God to 
to bring in the hopes and dreams for all of humankind. That all may be well. Jesus came because God so loved the world that he gave his only son to be born in humble means, to live in humble means, to live for our sake. This is why we celebrate Christmas. The gifts are nice, the lights are nice, but more important, the love that God shares. I hope and pray that you will find healing and comfort in this time, that you will find a sense of, or experience the, the sense of oneness with your family, with, with the neighbors, with those in your sphere of influence, that you may sense God's presence, loving presence, in all that you experience this season. And may your new year be all that you need it to be, that you can share the good news with others through your life. Again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.